understanding the peace of God. The first peace is Godward peace. Well, we have peace with God when we have accepted Jesus into our hearts as our personal Savior. The second manifestation of peace is what I call personal peace. But God came to give us personal peace. Uh, peace in your mind and heart concerning your personal life. Saying the peace of God which passes by all understanding shall keep your hearts and mind. That's the peace of God that passes all understanding. That's personal peace. The third manifestation of peace is what I call directional peace. This is the peace that we have when it comes to God's leading. Uh, you're God's voice. We know God's voice. And we follow God's voice. What a good confession to make uh, concerning God leading us in different directions. But this is what I call directional peace. When God gives us peace in our heart concerning the direction that he's leading us into. And as I stated, we hear God's voice, we know God's voice, and we follow God. So you should go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Uh, walking in the Spirit, one of the fruit of the Spirit is peace. God gives us peace when it comes to direction. If you're about to make a decision, and that decision is not what God wants you to do, God will not give you his peace concerning it. And you'll say, I don't have a peace about that. Or you'll just say, I don't feel right. I have a check in my spirit. I don't have a peace in my heart. Peace serves as a confirmation of God's will concerning a situation. If you're supposed to do something or you say, well, I believe I'm supposed to change jobs and go to this, this other job. Well, if you don't have a peace about it, you better go back and check this. I just don't have a peace about that. I don't think I need to do that. Because God would give you his peace as it would relate to that chain. Or it could be different things. It could be somebody that you may meet. Um, a companion or whatever that you're about to get involved with. But you don't have a peace. Now you may not even know why you don't have a peace. Uh, Everything could seem to be right. I remember a pastor saying one time he had a couple of people that he met and uh, they had some kind of business that they had started and they asked him to invest in it. And said so everything seemed to be perfect as to why he should invest in the business. Everything looked good on the table and he was about to invest several thousand dollars into this business, but he did not have a peace. But everything looked good and sounded good. Everything seemed to be right, but he just could not get a peace. So he eventually told them, so I don't have a peace about this. I don't have a peace about investing into this company. And a few weeks afterwards, he found out that those people were crooks. In other words, they were going to swindle his money and get his money from it. So it goes to show you that we have to have a peace about things. Uh, and all the time, it may not seem to be right. You can meet somebody, and they can appear to be just a perfect person for you. A guy or a girl, they could appear to be the perfect person, but you just don't have quite a peace. But everything seemed to be right. They look nice, and 
talk nice and so forth, seem to be faithful in their church attendance. At least they say they are. You don't know really how faithful they are because you just met them maybe a few weeks ago. But, you know, these are the kinds of things that we encounter um, on our Christian journey. But God has a remedy. He'll give us his peace. And if we don't have that peace, we know something is wrong. I need to bag up. I need to sort of take it slow and take my time concerning this because I don't feel quite right about this individual. And that's just an example. There could be many things, many examples. The state like investing or changing jobs or a whole bunch of different things. But this is what I call directional peace. When God gives us peace in our heart concerning the direction that he's leading us into. And as I stated, we hear God's voice, we know God's voice, and we follow God's voice. Matter of fact, that's a verse that I want you to remember. Uh, you can write it down if you desire. It's in St. John chapter 10. It says... Um, Verse 2, starting, it said, But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of a stranger. And this particular passage, really in St. John, it talks about Jesus being the good shepherd. And in verse 27, it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Here you'll find three statements that ring out, and that is God's sheep, which we are. Hear his voice. They know his voice, and they follow his voice. That's a confession that I make over my own life on a regular basis. So I hear God's voice, I know God's voice, and I follow God's voice. And you may want to make that confession over your life. To say, I hear God's voice, in other words, I hear him when he's speaking to me. I know his voice, I know it's him, and I follow his voice. And the voice of a stranger I'll not follow. Say, but I'll run from it. I'll flee from the voice of a stranger because he's a stranger. He's not the true shepherd. He's not the good shepherd. And this is something that would be good, a good confession. And after you say it so long, which I've been saying it now for years, after you say it so long, you'll start believing it. So you start believing, that's faith. Faith will come. You start having faith, and I hear God's voice. I know God's voice, and I follow God's voice. And the voice of a stranger, I'll not follow, but I'll flee. I run from the voice of a stranger. That's the enemy. The voice of a stranger or somebody that the enemy is using. But that's number three. And number four is what I call situational peace. Now, these are terms that I came up with that I made up as a young pastor. Situational peace. Situational peace is the peace that God allows us to manifest toward people, someone in a conflicting situation. Because there will be people that you will have to deal with and confront and that will confront you concerning certain situations in life. There will be people that you're going to have to deal with. Where God wants his peace to manifest there as well. Um, remember God said, blessed are the peacemakers. In other words, we can make peace with individuals that may be conflicting individuals. There are some people who just like confrontation and so forth. But God will use you as the peacemaker. You can ask God to allow you to manifest his peace in that situation. It can be at work. It can be in a family situation. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 12, 14, say, follow peace with all men. They follow peace with all men. 
And in Romans 14, verse 19, it says, Follow after the things which make for peace. They follow after the things which make for peace. God didn't want us arguing. A lot of times we may find ourselves in arguments and so forth, but that's not the will of God. God wants peace in our relationships among friends, co-workers, family members. God wants us to manifest his peace. That for those that walk in the peace of God, they're called the children of God. So we want to bless the other peacemakers. They should be called the children of God. God will, the people rather, will see uh, God in us, the character and the virtues of God as we walk in the peace of God and so forth. So God wants his peace to manifest through us when it deals with people. Now the other three prior to that was more or less personal situation, like direction of peace. That's something that we walk in concerning directions and personal peace, the peace that we have in our hearts when it comes to situations in life. Then God with peace. That's the peace that we must have. Uh, when I say we must have it, in other words, concerning our salvation, we have to have peace with God. In other words, we're not living a sinful life and um, have rejected Jesus and so forth. Because how can we stand before God and expect eternal salvation if we're going to reject His sacrifice, His gift that He's given? So these are the manifestations of the peace of God and I stated understanding the peace of God understanding how they manifest in different situations of our lives how they manifest concerning different life situations well I trust that you were blessed from this and uh, we look forward to the next time God bless you we love you and we'll see you on next time but before I go, there may be someone that's watching who may not have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Oh, that means that you don't have God with peace. You can't have it. If you think you have it, you've only deceived yourself because you can't have God with peace without Jesus. How can you? You can't have it. But if you say, but I want it, and I want it now, Praise God, where well, you can receive it right now by receiving Him. That Him is Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. So I want to give you the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ into your heart as your personal Savior. And it's as simple as asking Him to come into your heart. I'm going to lead you in a prayer of salvation and just repeat after me with all sincerity. Just repeat in your heart after me. Let's pray. Dear God, I come before your throne asking you to forgive me of all of my sins. I ask you to come into my heart. I accept you into my heart, Jesus, as my personal Savior. I believe that you died for my sin, shed your blood, and rose again from the dead. And I accept you, Jesus, as my personal Lord and Savior. According to your holy word, I am now saved. Thank you for saving me, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name, I am now heaven bound. I am now a new creature in Christ. Thank you, O oh Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise God. Hey, if you prayed that prayer in sincerity, then you are saved. You are saved, and I thank God so much for you. You can even call me here at the church and let me know that you gave your life to Christ. Now, someone else may answer the phone, but just tell them I prayed the prayer of salvation with Pastor Broderick, and I'm now saved. And say, I gave my life to the Lord, and I'm now a new creature. Say, I have that God with peace with God, and that's what you have. You have peace with God now because you've accepted His Son, Jesus. His sacrifice that he gave as your personal Savior. 
So we love you and we thank God so much for you. So until next time, stay blessed and stay in the peace of God. God bless you.